Super Mario 64 created a monster. A game that truly took advantage of the 3D space established an entirely new and at the time original subgenre of platforming games. And this subgenre is called the Collectathon. Here we go! Rather than sticking to the traditional linear level design, Mario 64 utilized the concept of larger levels meant for exploration instead of just rushing to the finish. But where there are larger levels, there needs to be something to do in them. And so the formula of collecting X amount of Y items came into existence. This quickly became the go-to style of game design for 3D platformers for the next few years, resulting in some very quality titles, and even entire game series. But for the most part, it was just a common way to make games based on licensed products, which were usually very mediocre and cash-grabby by default. Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue lies in the upper echelon of said cash grab license collectathon games. Yeah, it's no Mario 64, but it stands out as one of the very few licensed games that feels detached from the source material and is actually a really solid early 2000s action platforming game. This game really is Toy Story 2 in every way apart from the story. It's virtually non-existent if you don't count the shit quality movie clips shown that bridge the levels together that will literally spoil the movie if for some reason you haven't watched it that I really cannot show here because Disney will screw me. Yeah, it borrows lots of the locations from the film and is premised on Buzz and the gang hunting for Woody, and the levels follow the path from Andy's house to Al's toy barn to Al's penthouse and finally to the airport. But you never really pay any attention to it with how mindlessly fun and detailed the game is whenever you decide to ignore the absolutely horrendous pop-in. For a PS1 game, Toy Story 2 actually looks really good. Exploring places like most of Andy's house and even Al's toy barn are such a joy if you've been a longtime fan of Toy Story. Everything is just so colorful and built to scale for the most part. I find it kind of funny, I guess, that the levels are, well, really small. But since you're a toy, they feel massive. And they're just the simplest places ever, too. Like, why in the hell would Buzz Lightyear have to go and fetch wrenches for Slinky Dog in the wet concrete foundation of a building being constructed? I didn't even think about this until now, but why does Buzz need to find five little rubber duckies in this interconnected back alley trash pit with a pool of water and some shady ass fruit market? Andy's house must be in an alternate dimension set in Alabama because his backyard leads to a lot with a possessed lawnmower and the typical redneck yard that's only missing a lawn toilet. Not to mention this big ass tree that looks like it's going to be the future home of the kids next door. The best location of the bunch has to be Al's penthouse though. In the movie, his apartment wasn't just super detailed apart from Woody's roundup toys, but here, Traveler's Tales really made something out of it. I forgot to mention that the game also boasts a really catchy and just all around good soundtrack. The theme that plays in Al's penthouse fits perfectly with his obsession of western memorabilia. The walls and floors are right out of a saloon. There's a train-shaped bed being circled by a miniature train set. The display room that is in the movie feels like an art studio with its display lights and cases for Woody-related merchandise. Before I seem too rambly, the point that I'm trying to make here is that although the levels are simple on the surface, the most mundane shit like avoiding this weird green shit in Andy's basement is just so interesting. Literally flooding Al's entire bathroom so you can grab some stupid ass little rabbit is a great example of how wacky the game design is here. I do wish that every level would have been made with the same craziness in mind though, specifically the last part of the game. We go from redneck backyards and Toy Story arcades to a dark, boring ventilation system or the ugly ass baggage handling area and the bland, lazy airstrip. It is a good thing that the whole collectathon trope doesn't completely feel like an artificial way to beef up the length of the game. Sure, each level follows the same structure of get all five pizza plant tokens by fighting this mini boss, fulfills some sort of special requirements unique to that particular level, finding five smaller versions of this one bigger NPC, completing a race or gathering certain items in a short amount of time, and bring Ham's cheap Mr. Grab's ass 50 coins in every single level. With how fun it is to navigate, and with how different most levels are from each other, the game doesn't get boring as quickly as you'd expect. You only need to follow this level loop for 10 levels in total, and 5 others being boss battles. Thankfully the boss fights are sprinkled in after every 2 normal levels to break up the monotony. There is a downside to this though, you need to fully complete 8 of the 10 normal levels in order to finish the game. Which means you have to find about 40 Pizza Planet tokens out of 50. 
A positive way to look at this though could be that you don't really need to waste too much time in the airport related stages. You can seriously just grab a single pizza planet token and then bounce. Fully completing a few levels will also require some backtracking. There will be some platforms that you can't quite get to yet or a race that you're a bit too slow for. Most levels contain some standard power-ups for Buzz like a rapid fire laser or this orb that gives him invincibility for a short time, but in order for Buzz to get to where he needs to be, he's going to need the rocket boots, hover boots, and the grappling hook. Unlocking the usage of these requires you to find missing pieces of Mr. Potato Head somewhere in only a few levels. Once you bring back the pieces, you'll be given access to whatever power-up he was next to, and then you're off to backtrack into the levels that need said power-up. I guess that this promotes replayability, but um... One time is enough to go through the game, especially when you've already accidentally left several levels when you didn't even want to when prompted to either leave or keep playing after each token you collect. Why was this a thing? Playing as Buzz Lightyear feels much more solid than a ton of other platformers around at the time. Buzz feels a little weighty when he runs and handles pretty fluidly. Making hard turns will complicate things though as the camera in typical 3D platformer fashion is dog shit. Sometimes it wants to move with you, most of the time Buzz will be facing the opposite direction and the camera will seemingly forget that it exists and then snap into the correct position. Buzz's animations obviously aren't as smooth as they are in the film, but they still remain pretty convincing and feel mostly organic. There's Bounce when running. His arms aren't super stiff in motion, he slides down a pole like a pro. I especially love the way that the double jump looks and how it feels in general. Battling against enemies and bosses alike is nothing to call home about and is probably the weakest element in the game. Of course we have Buzz's standard issue laser and also a little first person mode where you can get more precise shots with said laser. There are also some power ups that can be gathered that don't really make that much of a difference. The discs are really only useful to wipe out certain enemies more quickly or to use solely on this jackhammer boss. The green laser is pretty dope though. It's essentially just the basic laser attack, but green, and fires rapidly. It sounds pretty damn cool too. And if you're feeling some hand-to-hand -hand combat involving Buzz beating the shit out of Zerg, you will not find it here. Just some spinning. And when you charge the spin, Buzz just gets dizzy for a few seconds, making the attack more dangerous than useful. Even if I think collectathon games are a dime a dozen, Toy Story 2 is one of the good ones, in my opinion. Probably just the nostalgia talking paired with my intentional inexperience with collectathon games, but even without that sort of design, this game is a solid platformer full of that Toy Story charm that we all know and love, albeit kind of slippery at times and with a horrible camera. If you haven't yet, get you a taste of this licensed mediocre goodness.